DZRA si Elizal. Okay, corporate. Same. So, ang sabi ko na lang. Isang mapayapang hapon Pilipinas, narito ang inyong balerina ng bayan, si Lisa Makuha, na bumabati sa lahat ng nakikinig sa DZRH at sa lahat ng nanonood ng RHTV. Lalong-lalo na sa ating mga kasamahang alagad ng sining at kultura sa buong bansa. Madalas natin marinig na kulang sa mga role models ang ating mga kabataan ngayon. Dahil sa makabagong pamumuhay na tila mas nagiging makasarili at nakatuon sa mga material na bagay, napakahirap humanap ng mga public figures na maaring gawing inspirasyon para sa ating mga anak. Kaya naman ang panauhin natin sa hapong ito ay naglabas ng isang serye ng children's books na hango sa buhay ng mga makabagong Pilipino at pwedeng gawing pamantayan ng tunay na kahulugan ng tagumpay at ng mabuting pagkatao, lalo na para sa mga kabataan. Samahan ninyo kami sa kalahating oras ng masayang kwentuhan kasama ang journalist at children's book author na si Miss Yvette Fernandez. Isinilang sa Maynila, si Yvette Fernandez ay nagtapos mula sa University of the Philippines kung saan hinirang siya bilang Most Outstanding Student in Journalism at tumanggap ng Best Thesis Award para sa kanyang investigative report, Envelopmental Journalism, Corruption in the Philippine Print Media. Nagtrabaho siya bilang lifestyle editor para sa Manila Times bago tumulak papuntang New York noong 1992 para kumuha ng master's degree sa Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism. Matapos nito, nanirahan siya sa Amerika ng labing anim na taon bilang television anchor, writer at editor para sa Bloomberg News. Nang bumalik siya sa Pilipinas, naging editor-in-chief ng Town and Country Philippines Magazine. Dito rin siya nagsimulang magsulat ng children's books tulad ng Halo-halo special, Maya's birthday party at Dream Big series mula sa Summit Books na kinabibilangan ng mga titulong Big John, ang talambuhay ni John Gokongwe Jr., Nanay ko ring, talambuhay ni Nanay Socorro Ramos ng National Bookstore, Ninoy, Cory and Noynoy, Noy, Simply Jessie, hango sa buhay ni dating Secretary Jessie Robredo at Princess Leia na talambuhay ni Leia Salonga. Isang mainit na pagsalubong ang hatid ng art to art sa journalist turned children's book author na si Yvette Fernandez. Good afternoon Yvette and welcome to art to art Thank you Lisa, nice to see you again. Yeah, it has been what, a year? Oh, kasi Uh-oh. si Lisa yung naging cover namin sa um, Town and Country, Town and Country. nag-pictorial July. tayo sa Tagaytay. Yeah, just no. for the art issue. Yeah. Mga uh-huh. last, two years ago na yata yon. Was it two years ago na? Mm-hmm. Hindi last year? Parang mabilis ng panahon. Oo, oh, ah, mabilis ng okay. panahon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Yvette, um, um, talagang uh, dream mo talaga na maging writer? Um, Dati pa? Dati pa, well, dati, actually, business major ako sa okay. college. So, mm-hmm. three years ako na sa business. Mm-hmm. And then, one day, um, nakita ng nanay ko na nakatulog ako sa mga libro kong accounting. Mm-hmm. At sabi niya, masaya ka ba sa ginagawa mong mm-hmm. um, course? Mm-hmm. Sabi ko, actually, hindi. Pero hindi ko alam kung anong gagawin ko kung mm-hmm. hindi ako business kasi kailangan ako mabuhay. Mm-hmm. Tapos, sabi, at that point, sinabi ng ng mom ko. Well, nakikita ko nagsusulat ka sa parish bulletin mm-hmm. dati. Once a week, nagsusulat ako doon. At mm-hmm. sabi niya, nang, nagsusulat ka doon every Tuesday night for Sunday. Parang napakasaya ng mukha mo mm-hmm. at sobra kang alive mm-hmm. pag nagsusulat ka noon. So, sabi niya, ba't hindi mong, uh, ba't hindi ka mag-try na maging writer na lang? Mm-hmm. So, sabi mm-hmm. ko, third year na ako sa college. Mm-hmm. Sabi ko, mahirap yon Kailangan mag-umpisa uli. Sabi mm-hmm. niya, marami nung panahon. Mm-hmm. Tapos, sabi ng father ko at the time, um, Huwag mong isipin yung parang how to make money. Kasi mm-hmm. later on, uh, you can live with us as long as you want. We mm-hmm. can support you. Mm-hmm. And then, if you enjoy what you're doing, mm-hmm. you don't have to really worry about earning the money. Kasi yeah. pag magaling kasi sa ginagawa mo, 
darating rin yun to so whatever mm -hmm. you happen to do. Mm -hmm. So, fourth year, first semester, nag, naglipat ako, nag-shift ako ng course mm -hmm. sa journalism, sa MassCom, sa UP. Mm -hmm. So, since then, no looking back, mm -hmm. um, I stayed an extra year and a half. So, five years ako sa UP. Mm -hmm. Pero since then, parang alam ko na na magiging yeah. journalist ako. Uh -huh. Since then, and you were, years. Um, 20 years, you were a journalist for... Um, for almost 20 years, first with Manila Times, yes. and then later for Bloomberg News in New York. Yes. Okay, so how did you sustain your creative streak while working in um, in hard news? Hard news. Uh -uh. Uh, but from hard news, big lang children's books. Children's books. Ang, ang, ang yeah. ng ano. <laughs> well, like actually, <laughs> you know, yeah, actually, the cre it was more like uh, enjoy ako sa... Um, so writing in general, so mm -hmm. I guess all forms of writing, including journalism, yon. So I would, I really, I enjoy doing anything related to, to writing. Mm -hmm. So when I was, uh, so I was in UP for two years. I mm -hmm. mean, so I, I went to, I was in Manila Times for two years. Mm -hmm. was, that during that time, was a lifestyle, lifestyle beat ako. So that mm -hmm. was very interesting. Then I ako sa New York, and for eighteen years with. Um, I was with Bloomberg, mm -hmm. mostly financial news, although yung last four years was writing about arts and culture mm -hmm. and food. Mm -hmm. yung, yung trabaho ko kumakain sa mga restaurants Ay, ang na trabaho. Sabi ko, yun yung masunod na trabaho. <laughs> Pero at that, after that, um, pinapuwi na ako ng, ng family ko. Mm -hmm. And so I said, sige, kung mag makakahanap ako ng trabaho. And then, you know, for ako ng dati kong roommate sa New York, mm -hmm. um, Si Liza Go Kong Wei Cheng, mm -hmm. may ari siya ng Summit Media. Mm -hmm. So, inoffer niya sa akin yung trabaho ng um, Town and Country. Mm -hmm. So, doon ako mawe ng 2010. Mm -hmm. And dahil kaibigan ko siya, alam niya na yung gusto ko talaga maging writer. Mm -hmm. And so, um, at the time, actually, uh, rewind ng konte Mga 2005, nagsulat ako ng book ng Halo Halo Especial. It's mm -hmm. uh, for Adarna Books. Sinabit ko ng cold um, I just mailed it. Sa, uh, so this was your first. That was book. the first one. Yeah, first I, children's book. First children's book. Okay. I emailed it to. No, I sent it via mail mm -hmm. sa Adarna Books kay Annie Almario, mm -hmm. and then in email niya ako saying that she liked the book, mm -hmm. and so we worked on it together. Mm -hmm. And at the time, um, my sister was sick at the time, and uh, she. Si Annie didn't know about my sister being sick, pero sabi niya, baka we can make the, the main character sick and um, how she gets well with Filipino treats. At the time, kasi yung halo, uh, yung sunod ka yung halo halo special. Mm -hmm. Ang dami kong namimiss na pagkain, mm -hmm. na Filipino mm -hmm. food. So mm -hmm. yung sinulat ko, it's about all the Filipino merienda treats. So may ensaymada, may bibingka, mm -hmm. may turon, ah, and then of course okay. halo halo. Uh -huh. So for some reason, nagusta na mga ano yun. So, um, after that, just right after, yung sister ko na nagkasakit, after she, just slightly after, shortly after she passed away, mm -hmm. ninabas yung, yung book na yun, Halo Halo mm -hmm. Special. So it's, it's very meaningful to me in the mm -hmm. sense that it um, brings back happy memories of my sister and my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And actually all the proceeds from that particular book mm -hmm. go to uh, the Carewell community, which mm -hmm. was established by my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, mm -hmm. for patients with cancer. Yes. And yeah. so that, in a way, it, it's been living on, and yeah. that's the biggest selling book of all of them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's still, up to now, we're still getting royalties for the Carewell Foundation. Uh -huh. so okay. it's actually you mentioned you um, came back from New York in 2010, right? 2010. Uh -huh, 2010. So, nandun ka nung 9-11? Yeah, nandun ako yeah. nung 9-11. So, what was that was, like? 9/11. Um, actually, at that point, June of 2000, July actually of 20. Uh, what's that? 9/11 was 2001. Mm -hmm. I was all set to move home. Actually, mm -hmm. I said, you know, it's about time. It's been a long time. I kind of have to move back now. And then I was at home, and a friend called, and he said, um, there was a plane which crashed into the World Trade Center. And of, at the time, we thought it was just a regular plane crash. I remember the journalist in me said, "Pa." That's a story. So I called my other friend. Um, mm -hmm. Her name's Isa Lorenzo. She owns Silverlands Gallery. Mm -hmm. And I said, Isa, there's a plane which crashed into the World Trade Center. She lives nearby. I was mm -hmm. like, go out and take pictures. Yes. And take pictures of that plane crash. She goes, okay, okay, I'm on my way. Mm -hmm. I'll take pictures. And then the next thing we knew was the second plane crash. And we realized it was a terrorism attack. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I called Isa. I said, 
is that too much? Just mm -hmm. leave that place yeah. and just get out of there. Yeah. So she actually ended up walking all the way from downtown, just, I don't know, 60, 70 blocks to get to our apartment midtown. Mm -hmm. She stayed with us for like a week or something. Mm -hmm. But I remember New York was so, so quiet yeah. at that point. Nobody was talking mm -hmm. at all. Everybody was just walking in the streets like, like parang mga zombie kami mm -hmm. lahat. And then after that, um, yung, uh, um, the mayor at the time was Rudy Giuliani. After that, our, the owner of Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, mm -hmm. became mayor of the city right after that. But we were also affected. We felt this incredible loyalty mm -hmm. to New York na we couldn't leave. That's why I ended up staying another nine years mm -hmm. after that because mm -hmm. we, we, had, we really felt we had to help in the rebuilding because mm -hmm. everybody knew somebody who had been affected by, mm -hmm. by that. We had three people from Bloomberg who passed away mm -hmm. in the, during the bombing because oh, they were there okay. selling, mm -hmm. I mean, they were there salesmen of our, our products. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess it was just such a painful time to be there. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it made us love the city so much more mm -hmm. and become incredibly loyal to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now it's great to see how it immediately picked up and was yeah. back to normal. Mm -hmm. And rebuilding and everything. Okay, going back to writing. Yeah. <laughs> Sige. Mm -hmm. Parang ma uh, okay. Going back to writing. So the the writing style is very different. So ano mm -hmm. yung bagay na tutunan mo bilang isang journalist mm -hmm. na gagamit mo sa pagsusulat ng mga children's books. Uh, Balay as a journalist, ayoko yung pag nababasa ko yung mga sobrang heavy na literature na mm -hmm. puro mga deep words and mga kala nila matalino sila kasi mm. gumagamit tala ng talagang heavy deep language mm -hmm. ako naman as a journalist i guess parang i always tried to keep yung mga words ko simple like anything above four three syllables is already too long mm -hmm. so i guess that's how i've been writing as a whole mm -hmm. trying to keep things simple and parang to tell a story in the simplest way possible na marami makakaintindi mm -hmm. and so i guess with writing for children the same way mm -hmm. um, just write and try to get your message across mm -hmm. in the simplest way possible but at the same time putting your heart into it i think that's why i really like reading stories where i can feel some sort of emotional attachment or mm -hmm. something i guess that's wrong the wrong thing for a journalist to do because it's objective but mm -hmm. i guess even when i write feature stories kailangan, there has to be some sort of heart yeah. connected to it and with the children's stories that's what we always look for to how we can make other people relate to it mm -hmm. and uh, feel that they're a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I guess with the way sa mga biographies, it's always written how children can relate to it more. So mm -hmm. it's more, even if they're like big names, it's how they're connected to family nila, mm -hmm. how they are good parents and good brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and how it just all goes back to the family. So yeah. that's how we sort of write the narrative based on stuff children can relate to and mm -hmm. how. Now, people in general, actually, surprisingly, mga biographies, mas maraming nagbabasa atan na adults kaysa mm -hmm. sa children. Mm -hmm. Because they can also relate more to the, the characters involved mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. stories. Okay. Marami pat po tayong pag-uusapan kasama ang journalist at children's book author na si Yvette Fernandez dito pa rin sa Art to Art. Magbabalik po kami pagkatapos ng ilang paalala. Programang hatid ay sining at kulturang para sa lahat. Magbabalik ang Art to Art. Schedule ng mga inaabangang konsyerto. Update sa mga magagandang panoorin sa mga tanghala at teatro. Narito na ang Art to Art Calendar. Narito ang ating Arts Calendar. Sa pelikula, iniyahandog ng Shangri-La Plaza Mall ang Movie Mov, Italian Film Festival sa Shang Cineplex mula July 23 hanggang July 27. Pinamagatang Movie Mov 3, Italian Cinema Now. Ang festival ay magtatampok ng contemporary Italian films at ng mga obra ng filmmaker na si Ettore Scola sa Classic Retrospective. Para sa kompletong schedule, tumawag sa 370-2500 
Local 597 o bumisita sa website na shangrila-plaza.com o sa Facebook page na Shangrila Plaza Office Fan Page. Sa teatro, ipinagdiriwang ng tanghalang Ateneo ang kanilang 36th season na may temang Navigating Identities. Ang kanilang pambungad na handog ay andulang middle finger ni Han Ong, isang adaptation ng sikat na German play na Spring Awakening ni Frank Wedeking. Ito'y mapapanood simula August 1 sa Fine Arts Black Box Studio ng Ateneo de Manila University, Katipunan Avenue, Quezon City. Ang Middle Finger ay isang coming-of-age story tungkol sa dalawang Filipino teenagers na nag-aaral sa isang Catholic school sa Amerika. Para sa kompletong schedule, tumawag sa 0916-480-2195 o mag-email sa ta.mpc78 at gmail.com o bumisita sa website na tanghalangateneo.org o Facebook page na Tanghalang Ateneo. Sa Sining Biswal, inihahandog ng Cultural Center of the Philippines at ng Galeria Duemila ang Psychology Today, solo show ng conceptual painter na si Maria Cruz mula July 24 hanggang August 24. Ito ay binubuo ng mga text-based paintings na tumatalakay sa mga isyu ng gender, politics, race at identity. Magbibigay ng artist talk si Cruz sa July 24 alas 4 ng hapon na susundan ng pagbubukas ng exhibit alas 6 ng gabi sa Bulwagang Fernando. Nando Amorsolo. Ang CCP ay matatagpuan sa Ross Boulevard, Pasay City. Para sa karagdagang detalye, tumawag sa 823-1125 o mag-email sa ccp.exhibits at gmail.com. Usapang sining at kultura para sa lahat. Kasama ang balirina ng bayan, si Lisa Makuha. Art to Art. Kasama pa rin natin ang manunulat na si Yvette Fernandez. Okay, Yvette, you started talking about the, um, the books that you've written for children. Uh, it's the Dream Big Book series. Mm -hmm. um, okay, how did this series come about? And mm -hmm. uh, tell us about how you line up the personalities that you feature in the series. Mm -hmm. So it actually all started with Big John. It's the story of Big John Gokungwe. Mm -hmm. Actually, it started actually mga three or actually over five years ago. Mm -hmm. Kasi si Liza Gokungwe, na anak ni Big John, is actually one of my friends. Mm -hmm. And so, nung buntis siya with her first child, mm -hmm. bored siya sa bahay. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, um, let's do something for my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, actually, at the time, I had read a, uh, one of his speeches, mm -hmm. and I said, napakagaling naman ng speech na yan, umiikot sa internet. Mm -hmm. So sabi ko, dapat ikaw magsulat ng book tungkol sa dad mo, mm -hmm. na children's book. Sabi niya, ayaw kong magsulat ng children's book. Ikaw magsulat ng children's book sa dad ko. Mm -hmm. So we did. Um, we wrote it, I guess, like five years ago. And then um, she said, okay, let's publish it. But then she gave birth, and then she got so busy with work, mm -hmm. and then so about three years ago, when she was planning his 80, 85th birthday, I mm -hmm. think it was his 80th, no, I can't remember if it's the 80th or the 85th birthday, mm -hmm. um, she decided she wanted to have a present for him, and I said, what about that book we wrote yeah. like so many years ago, which you never got done? And she goes, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So she read it again, so she hired an illustrator, and so they gave it as a present para mm -hmm. sa ng 80th birthday, I think, for his, for their father. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, people liked it so much. Yung mga pumunta sa, sa karawan niya, yun mm -hmm. yung binigay na souvenir. Mm -hmm. So nagutan ng mga tao, they all started asking, can mm -hmm. you give us copies of the book? And the book was basically about when he was a kid, how he... He, how he was, um, how they lost all their money. Okay. Tapos, he, nagbenta siya ng mani, nagbenta siya ng um, sabon at uh -huh. kandila. Uh -huh. Binili niya na ng um, 5 centavos, binenta niya ng 10 centavos. Basically, mm -hmm. yung entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And how he started with that. And how he started getting bigger and bigger based on that. How he really worked really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And so basically, it's a story of how, uh, dahil sa sipag at tiyaga, at uh, hard work talaga mm -hmm. na mag magiging successful. So mm -hmm. basically, it's about successful entrepreneurs with tips on how to start a business. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, sabi ni Liza, dahil napaka-successful yung book na yun, naging, nagawing series. Mm -hmm. So the next one, we, we wanted actually, um, Manny, the one we've been hoping for is Manny Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. So, but we still haven't been able to get him. So, uh -huh. hopefully, nakikinig siya ngayon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> siya. So, the next one we did was Nana echoing the story of Socorro Ramos, mm -hmm. yung, the national bookstore, yung may-ari ng national bookstore. 
how she started out then. This one. Oh, yeah, hindi mm -hmm. siya nag-aral ng college dahil wala siyang pera. Mm -hmm. And so she worked as a sales girl at a bookstore mm -hmm. and how as a cashier and a sales girl and she eventually started her own bookstore. Mm -hmm. And now they have almost 200 bookstores all over the yes. Philippines. Mm -hmm. And basically again, hard work and um, just patience and always willing to start over. They went through World War II, they went through fires and uh, lots of typhoons and kept, they kept on rebuilding and rebuilding. And mm -hmm. it's basically how if you work hard, you can be successful. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it always talks about at the end how the family is most important. Mm -hmm. And She's now a great grandmother. She is now 90 and uh, wow. still going strong, still going to work to the office every day and uh, still Gusto ko yung, yung kanyang 12 tips from Nanay Kuring about business and life. Yung number 12 niya, buy lots of books from National Bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> Magaling siya talaga ng salesperson. <laughs> Up to now, super sales lady yung tawag uh -huh. sa kanya. And then after we decided why instead of just all entrepreneurs, we can go to other other um, subjects who are inspirational. Mm -hmm. And so we were thinking, should we do it Ninoy or Corey? Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, but basically, Nanay Corey and Big John was narrated from the point of view ng main character. Okay. As that both Ninoy and Corey, since namatay na ng dalawa, mm -hmm. we decided to make it from the point of view of Noy Noy. So, okay. si Noy Noy narrator. Pero as a whole, it's really about the Aquino family. Ah. And um, what okay. they were. So, Ninoy, Cory, and Noy Noy. And Noy Noy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. By Abigoy. And then after that was simply Jesse, the story of Jesse Robredo. Mm -hmm. Again, not, not just. Uh, an inspiring leader, but also a really good husband and father more mm -hmm. than anything. Honest, um, hardworking, mm -hmm. para a good example of good governance. So this one was written from the point of view of Jillian, young 13-year-old mm -hmm. daughter. Ah, so okay. at least she, at least the children could relate to her. Mm -hmm. And um, actually all of the books, the a portion of the proceeds go to the favorite foundations of the of the main character. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, so the Jesse Robredo, go to the Jesse Robredo Foundation mm -hmm. to help um, for, to train young people for good governance. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the last one, the most recent one is Princess Leia. Yeah, I, I saw the this on Facebook. Leia, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And mm -hmm. I think this one, the children can relate to it the most because it's pink. I remember when we first put it out, Sabi ni Liza, yung boss, but pink. Sobrang medyo masyadong matingkad na pink. Sabi uh -huh. ko, type na type ng mga little girls yan. Yung yes. pink na may princess. Sa yes. Uh -huh. So that's uh, that was the story. The life story of Leia Salonga. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so far, those are the five. Mm -hmm. And uh, no real plans yet for okay. the next one. Hopefully, of Manny Pacquiao nga. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, paging Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> So, so, that's um, so these are five role models that I, you know, definitely talagang mga role models for you. Mm -hmm. Who um, was your role model going growing up? Growing up, mm -hmm. hmm. my mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, yun lang. I can't really think of anyone who. I mean, I always had people I admired, mm -hmm. but as far as a role model, I really think I really wanted to be like my mother who was I guess always so selfless and giving and always so pleasant and mm -hmm. she had a sunshiny personality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she also went through a lot growing mm -hmm. up and um, I think like even now as an adult she's gone through a lot um, with the deaths in our family and so it's always good to see how she's able to to withstand to be very resilient and withstand everything mm -hmm. so I guess maybe one day well I hope Maybe I'm a little close to what she, <laughs> what mm -hmm. she has become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Well, so this these dream big books are, yeah. are, I think I'm sure a dream come true for you. Yes. Also. Uh -huh. I always dreamt of writing a book. I think I was grade. No, I think grade five when I started writing a book on a typewriter. Mm -hmm. I think I reached up to 60 pages. I don't even know where it went. My mom says she, has, she found it recently. Mm -hmm. um, and ever since, I always dreamt of writing a book. Every time I'm, I guess, there's certain things I need to forget, I just mm -hmm. sit down and just like write. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And that always takes me to a happy place, I guess. Okay, so, you know, yeah. happy place, guys, in mm -hmm. my right. And I guess in my own world, mm -hmm. <laughs> away from everything. I really enjoy reading, yeah. reading a lot and mm -hmm. writing a lot. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a dream project that's in the works? Dream project? Yeah. Um, I guess, well, these are children's books. Mm -hmm. I've always dreamt of writing something longer. Mm -hmm. So, maybe eventually I can write a novel one day. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of coming up with a good plot. Mm -hmm. So we'll see mm -hmm. if I can eventually do that. And we will wait for that. Abangan namin yan. Thank you so much for making time for us, Yvette. Thank you. Uh, I know your schedule is very busy with Down in Country, with all your writings and uh, editing and everything. So thank you so much for, for uh, spending the, time, the afternoon with us. Thank you, Lisa. Very happy to be here. <laughs> Hanggang sa susunod na linggo, samahan ninyo kami ulit dito sa Art to Art kung saan ang usapang sining at kultura ay para sa lahat. Ito po ang inyong balerina ng bayan, Lisa Makuha, nagpupugay sa artistang Pilipino.